Epictetus said that things are not good or bad by nature. It is our judgments and opinions that make them that way. Stoicism is a way of life that helps us decide who to trust and respect as we go through life's many relationships and encounters. Today we'll look at some thought-provoking examples of people who may not deserve our trust and respect, according to the Stoic way of life. Because virtue is more important than anything else, Stoic thought says we should only trust and respect people when we have to. So, who should we be careful to trust and respect, from the ghosts of lies to the quiet echoes of flattery? Let's talk about nine types of people who make it hard to trust and respect others. Before we begin, let's all think about how these people make you not trust and respect others. How does Stoicism help us react with calm and wisdom? Because we don't find comfort in condemnation, but in understanding and insight. If you're ready to begin this important journey, click here. Every challenge is a chance to grow and learn, and every experience is a chance to learn how to live a good life. Leave a statement to show that you want to learn more about the timeless teachings of Stoicism. As we work on becoming wiser and stronger, we can tell when someone doesn't deserve our trust and respect. Let's also work on building the qualities that make us deserve it. Number 1. The Gossip Monger Number 1. The Gossip Music Monger In the web of human interactions, trust and respect are the most important threads. However, some people cut themselves off from the virtue of integrity by the way they act. For example, Clara was known for liking to gossip what started out as harmless. Whispers shared in private soon turned into a web of mistrust and disrespect among her friends. Clara, who had been a trusted confidant, found herself alone with her words no longer. B-Stoicism teaches us that our words should show what kind of person we are, and gossip goes against the Stoic values of honesty and respect for others. It tears down society, making people dislike each other and spreading lies. People who gossip lack self-control and don't care about other people's dignity, which are all things that go against Stoic principles. Epicus, a Stoic philosopher, once said that we should care more about our character than our reputation because our character is who we really are and our reputation is just what other people think of us. He meant that gossip hurts both our character and our reputation, so we should take on the role of the gossip to communicate with sincerity and respect monger. We must be careful with our words and make sure they aren't used to put others down or cause disagreements. Instead, they should be used to encourage and bring people together by doing this. We align ourselves with the stoic ideal of living in harmony with our true nature and build relationships based on trust and respect. Let this story of Clara serve as a reminder of how damaging gossip is and how important it is to nurture relationships in the world of stoicism. The way we say things is just as important as what we say. When we want to live a good life, People often think of gossip as idle chatter, but it has a big impact on relationships and social interactions. The main character in this story, the gossip monger, stands for how stories and hearsay spread through communities by learning about the psychology and effects of gossip. We can see how complicated its role is in how people connect with each other. Social currency. Rumors are a form of social currency that people use to make friends, move up in social groups, and show their power. The gossip monger uses this currency to make money by using knowledge to change people's minds and relationships. Why people gossip? People naturally like to talk about other people because they are curious, they want to make friends, and they want to improve themselves. The gossip monger takes advantage of these drives by spreading stories to further their own goals or meet their own emotional needs, changes in relationships. Gossip can make people feel closer to each other by encouraging them to share knowledge, but when used intentionally or irresponsibly by the gossip monger, 
It can also break down trust and relationships, cultural and organizational dynamics. Gossip is common in many places like schools, workplaces and neighborhoods. It shows how cultural norms and power systems work the gossip. Monger knows how to work with these processes and changes people's opinions and social orders by carefully spreading information. Though gossip may seem harmless or fun, it can have serious effects that can hurt people's reputations, cause arguments and cause mental pain for those who are the target of rumors. Knowing the moral effects of talk is important for reducing its bad effects and building a culture of trust and respect. We can learn more about how people behave and how important it is for communities and relationships to have healthy communication by looking at the part of the gossip monger and how gossip works in society. Number two, the selfish person are you. Number two, the selfish person. Often the target of someone's excessive anger or pride. If so, you probably feel slighted and disrespected every time it happens at the heart of these situations, is probably a narcissist, someone who is too focused on themselves, their pride and their own needs, often at the expense of others. We see narcissism as more than just self-love. It's an inflated sense of one's own worth and a desire to always be the center of attention. The narcissist wants to be admired and doesn't care about other people which can cause trust and respect to break down. Think about Daman's story. Damien's narcissistic tendencies slowly broke down trust between him and his friends. Daman always wanted to be the star and rarely acknowledged other people's work or feelings. He needed to be validated all the time and couldn't celebrate other people's successes, which made him lonely over time. His co-workers and friends stopped hanging out with him because they wanted relationships based on mutual respect and empathy, which Damien couldn't provide stoicism as taught by philosophers like Marcus Aelius, teaches us the true self-worth comes from living a good life. Marcus Aelius himself told people not to praise themselves, putting an emphasis on a humble and helpful life in the field of stoicism. Narcissists don't deserve trust or respect, because they act in ways that go against the virtues of community and the general good stoicism tells us to build relationships with people who show respect, empathy and humility. These build trust and genuine respect. So even though we may meet narcissistic people along the way, stoicism tells us to be smart about our relationships and choose those who lift us up instead of bringing us down and share our lives. Instead of taking over by doing this, we align ourselves with the stoic pursuit of a peaceful and good life. Number three, the envious. There are people in the grand number three, the envious. Theatre of life who, instead of celebrating the successes of others, look upon them with envy to spot an envious person, watch how they respond to the successes of their peers. Does their face light up with joy, or does it darken with discontent? People who are jealous don't just want what other people have, they also hold grudges against those who have it. Think about the story of Marcus, a skilled artisan whose co-worker Julia got praise for her great work instead of sharing Julia's happiness. Marcus was filled with envy and put down Julia's achievements, which made their peers unhappy. Marcus's actions, which were motivated by jealousy, not only put him on his own, but also caused conflict in their community stoic philosophers who had deep understanding of how people behave warned us about how harmful envy is one of the most respected speak speakers in stoicism said it so well if you're feeling jealous it can eat away at your soul making you care more about other people's success than your own this can make you less happy and more focused on your own virtues so envy doesn't just ruin our relationships it also breaks down our character making us petty and selfish it keeps us from seeing our own potential and ties us to the successes and mistakes of others. So someone who is jealous doesn't deserve our trust or respect because their actions aren't based on virtue, 
but on a destructive desire that destroys the harmony and mutual support that are necessary for a community to thrive in conclusion. Let us try to be people who celebrate other people's successes and see them as a source of inspiration rather than a reason for envy. By doing this, we align ourselves with stoic principles and build a community of have you ever been around someone who was jealous? What did you do to keep them from bad influencing your life? Tell us in the comments. Envy is a complicated feeling that happens when we see other people with something we want but don't have it. Can be anything from mild jealousy to extreme anger, and it can have big effects on our relationships and mental health. Understand what envy is and how it works is important for getting along with others and growing as a person. Five things you should know about the envious definition and signs. Envy is an unpleasant emotion that comes from wanting something that someone else has accomplished or is good. About them, it usually shows up as comparing oneself to others, which makes a person feel inadequate or less than causes and triggers. Envy can be caused by many things, such as comparing yourself to others, thinking that something is wrong, or having low self-esteem. Envy can happen when we see someone succeed, where we have failed or enjoy something. We don't have effects on the mind being envious, can be bad for your mental health, causing more stress, worry, and even depression. Comparing yourself to others all the time and feeling bad about yourself can hurt your confidence and stop you from growing as a person. Social Dynamics Envy can ruin relationships by making people angry and hostile toward others. It can make people more competitive and make it harder for friends, family and co-workers to trust each other and work together. Coping Strategies The first step to dealing with envy well is to recognize and accept that you feel it. Feelings of envy can be lessened by being thankful for what we have focused on our own goals and successes and showing empathy for others. Having self-confidence and a good view of yourself are also important for getting over envy and making relationships better to encourage empathy, kindness and personal growth. It's important to understand what envy is and how it works. We can live a happier and more fulfilling life if we recognize and deal with our own feelings of envy. Number four, the always critic meeting. Number four, the always critic. Mentors who help us grow and be good people is a blessing in life. These people, along with their helpful criticism, pave the way for us to become better people. But it's important to tell the, the difference between real advice and the noise of constant CRI criticism. Not all people who criticize are teachers. Some are just critics who don't offer much in the way of solutions. Perhaps you know someone who is quick to find flaws, but slow to give help. This person is the perpetual critic. If someone is always criticizing others without thinking about how their words might affect others, they are likely to say hurtful things that aren't meant to be hurtful. The Stoic philosopher Epicus says that criticism can be seen through the lens of Stoicism, which is based on personal growth and resiliency. Don't explain your theory. Live it. This message tells us to pay attention, less on the voices of constant critics outside of us and more on our own internal compass of morality and reason. A con reviewer who looks for faults all the time without trying to make things better doesn't fit with Stoic values. If we let these people's words sink into our minds, they can not only stop us from growing, but they can also destroy our sense of peace and self-worth. This means that while constructive criticism can help us grow, the constant criticism often lacks the substance that leads to improvement. It is very important to understand this difference. Accept criticism that pushes you to be good and do your best and learn to let negative criticism fall off, like tree leaves leaving you unaffected. Let's look for leaders who are sincere and have a purpose, and remember that respect and trust are earned by being constructive.
Not destructive by living by stoic principles, we not only protect ourselves from the unhelpful criticism of the perpetual critic, but we also take an oath that is marked by growth resilience and virtue. Number 5. The Manipulative Individual Alex lived in a noisy number 5. The Manipulative Individual Neighbourhood Alex initially drew a lot of attention with his charisma and charm. However, Alex was also very manipulative and often tried to get his way in conversations and situations at other people's cost over time. Alex became more and more more manipulative. He spread false rumours to sway a group decision or fake distress to get sympathy and avoid taking responsibility. Slowly people in the community who were once honest and trusting began to see the trends. Alex's deeds rarely matched what he said and things always seemed to be set up to help him. Alex lost friends and respect as trust faded, invitations dropped conversations got shallow and Alex's impact waned. In the end, Alex found himself alone, a stark contrast to the busy social life he used to have. Alex is a normal member of this group of people in the tapestry of human interactions. We often find ourselves at a crossroads distinguishing between words that persuade and those that manipulate this distinction is crucial for while persuasion aims to enlighten and foster understanding. Manipulation seeks to deceive for personal gain, offering no true value and eroding the bedrock of trust and respect, effect upon which genuine relationships are built. Manipulative behavior is fundamentally at odds with stoic principles which value virtue, honesty and integrity above all. Stoicism teaches us that our actions and words should align with these core virtues, fostering trust and respect in our relationships. When manipulation enters the equation, it erodes these foundations leading to a loss of trust and ultimately respect. So how do we, guided by Stoicism, recognize and guard against the manipulative individual? First, we must cultivate discernment a stoic virtue that allows us to see beyond surface appearances and assess the true intentions behind words and actions. We must ask ourselves, are these words or actions serving a mutual good? Or are they designed to benefit one party at the expense of another? Manipulation caused this isolation, not community harshness. It was a poignant reminder of the stoic belief that our actions and choices define us and in the pursuit of virtue, there is no room for deceit or manipulation. There are people who know how to manipulate at others in every social group. It is very important to understand the strategies and reasons behind manipulative people. Whether they are in personal interactions, the workplace, or even in society as a whole, we can keep ourselves and others safe from these bad habits if we can spot them. Here are five important things you should know about people who are manipulative. Identifying people who are manipulative often hide their truth goals behind aggression charm or even flattery. At first look, they may seem nice and friendly, but what they do is only for themselves to avoid being manipulated. You need to learn to read people's body language and notice trends in how they act. Techniques to get what they want Manipulators use many techniques such as lying, making people feel guilty, gaslighting and playing on people, people's feelings. They take advantage of their targets, flaws and weak spots to take control of a situation or get an edge over it. Knowing these strategies can help us stay independent and fight their impact. Reasons There is a complicated web of reasons behind the act of manipulation. Some of these are the need for power, control, approval, or money. Some people act manipulatively because they are deeply insecure or have experienced pain in the past by knowing the person's true intentions. We can relate to them and still keep ourselves safe from their harmful actions. Effects Manipulation can have very bad effects, including ruined relationships, low self-esteem, and even mental harm. People who are manipulative often leave a mess of chaos and confusion behind them, which hurts trust and breaks down social bonds. 
realizing how harmful influence is, is the first thing that needs to be done to stop it. Defense strategies, we can come up with good defenses against manipulation if we know what we're doing and are aware of it. Setting limits, becoming more bold and improving our ability to think critically are all important skills that we need to have. Protecting ourselves from manipulators can also be done by surrounding ourselves with helpful and reliable people, by learning about what manipulation is and how it affects people and society. We can work to make society better and more stable. Knowing more about the world is the best way to protect ourselves. Number six, the flatter when people engage with each number six, the flatter. Other honesty is a key part of building trust and respect. However, there is a character in a US called the Flatterer whose fakeness destroys this very foundation. Thomas was known for flattering people too much. His words were sweet, but they didn't carry the weight of sincerity over time. His friends started to doubt the sincerity of his praise, which led to a loss of trust and respect. His relationships, which used to be deep, became shallow because he liked to flatter people more than tell the truth. Why are people who flatter others, seen with skepticism and weariness, Stoicism teaches us that honest relationships are based on respect and honesty. Flattery, especially when it's over the top and not earned, is a form of deception. It's a tool used not to encourage but to control. It's not meant to show genuine appreciation, but to curry favor, this kind of behavior goes against Stoic values, which stress how important it is to be honest and treat others with respect. Something Seneca, a Stoic philosopher, advised of the dangers of flattery, saying that it takes advantage of our weaknesses. People who flatter others do so because they want to get what they want by doing so. They show a lack of self-control and a disregard for the Stoic virtue of authenticity. Because of this, we should be wary of people who use flattery as a tool for self-interest and try to build relationships based on honesty and sincerity. We should also resist the urge to be the flatterer, knowing that real respect and admiration come from being genuine. The flatter is an idea that has been a part of human interaction for a very long time, and in many different countries, with its sweet words and gestures, this subtle form of manipulation often seems harmless, but it hides ulterior intentions below the surface. It's important to understand how flattery works so you can get along with others. Avoid being lied to and tell the difference between real praise and sneaky influence. The illusion of affection, flattery often looks like real love or respect, creating a false impression of warmth and appreciation but it comes from wanting to get favor power or an edge over, over other people, which is selfish manipulation through ego. Stroking a skilled flatterer takes advantage of the other person's weaknesses and fears to get them to do what they want or stay loyal. They make their targets feel like they owe them something by boosting their egos and stroking their fragile self-images, feeding narcissism. Nice compliments feed the narcissistic ego and make them think they are better than others. The flatterer traps the ego in a web of flattery by giving them clever compliments and praise. This keeps the cycle of dependence and manipulation going on the surface. Flatterers are charming, but they are actually hiding a web of lies. They have ulterior goals and hidden agendas, whether they want to get something for themselves, gain power, or feel good about themselves. Their comments and actions are carefully planned to help them reach their goals, being aware and skeptical because people often hide their truth behind flattery. It is very important to develop awareness and doubt. You can stay clear and strong when dealing with flattery. If you question motives, tell the difference between genuine praise and calculated manipulation, and trust your gut. The play. The flatter shows how two-sided human relationships can be with the lines between honesty and trickery. 
love and abuse being blurred, you can protect yourself from its deceptive draw and build real relationships based on trust and mutual respect by figuring out how it works and understanding its many layers. Number seven, who was hurt in the grand story of our lives? There are number seven, who was hurt? People who always play the victim. These people often wrap themselves in a mantle of misfortune, not as a real cry for help, but as a way to get sympathy and avoid taking responsibility. They now go through life not as authors of their own fate, but as perpetual victims of circumstance often taking advantage of other people's sympathy, take Emily's case as an example. Emily's friends who at first felt sorry for her slowly become aware of this pattern which makes them lose trust and respect for her. They realize that constant victimhood is not a situation but a choice, a refusal to face life's problems with independence and responsibility. Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher, said, It's not what happens to you that matters, but how you react to it. This shows us how important it is to be strong and in control when life gets hard. This wise saying supports the Stoic idea that we can control our character and how we react, even when we can't change the outside world. This means that the person who lives in victimhood and uses other people's kindness to avoid or win something is not being honest with themselves, not at all like the stern man. Some of the virtues of courage, knowledge and justice are behavior. Not only hurts personal growth, but it also breaks down the trust and respect that are necessary for healthy two-way relationships. In other words, empathy and support are important parts of our society, but they shouldn't be used by people who don't want to take responsibility for their actions. We need to talk to people who take on the role of victim persona with discernment provides support that pushes people to be responsible instead of letting them avoid it. By doing this, we uphold the stoic ideals of personal responsibility and mutual respect, creating a community where trust is earned through genuine interaction and shared growth. Join the conversation in the comments below by telling us what kinds of people you're dealing with and how you're handling them. Number eight. The person who lacks. Number eight, the person who lacks empathy. Empathy. Our relationships with others are made up of threads of empathy and understanding. Empathy is what lets us connect deeply with others, share in their joys and sorrows, and build a community based on compassion and a lot of respect. When we meet people who don't have empathy, we notice a dissonance in the harmony of human connection, an absence that slows the growth of a good community Stoic philosophers who put a lot of value on traits like wisdom, courage, justice and temperance knew that empathy was an important part of living a good life. For example, Mark Alias, a Stoic philosopher, once said that empathy is what hurts others the most. The hive injures the bee. This profound statement underscores the interconnectedness of our lives and the importance of empathy in enduring the well-being of our collective human hive. An individual lacking empathy sees the world through a narrow lens focused solely on their needs and experiences, oblivious to the emotional landscapes of, of others. Such a person detached from the joys and struggles of their fellow beings fails to contribute to the fabric of a supportive and understanding community. Their absence of empathy not only isolates them, but also diminishes the collective capacity for compassion and shared human experience. Thus it becomes clear that those who lack empathy, who are unable to step outside themselves to understand and share in the feelings of others, do not merit our trust or respect. Trust is built on understanding and respect is cultivated through shared values and mutual regard qualities that are fundamentally absent in those devoid of empathy. In conclusion, let us embrace the stoic call to cultivate empathy to extend our understanding and compassion beyond ourselves and to contribute to a community where trust, respect and virtue flourish by doing so. 
we not only honor the Stoic principles, but also nurry a world where every individual is seen, heed, and valued, creating a tapestry of human experience, rich with understanding and mutual respect. Empathy, or being able to understand and share another person's feelings, is a basic part of getting along with others and making friends. But this trait isn't present in everyone to the same degree. Some people have trouble understanding how others feel, which can make relationships and conversation hard. Understanding the person who doesn't have empathy is important for getting along with them and making relationships that empathy or being able to understand and share another person's feelings is a basic part of getting along with others and making friends. But this trait isn't present in everyone. To the same degree some people have trouble understanding how others feel, which can make relationships and conversation hard. Understanding the person who doesn't have empathy is important for getting along with them and making relationships that are healthier. Lack of emotional awareness. People who don't have empathy often have trouble recognizing or understanding how other people feel. It might be hard for them to understand how someone is feeling through face expressions, body language or vocal cues. When this happens, they might not seem to care about or understand how other people feel, how hard it is getting along with others. Empathy is a key part of making and keeping relationships. If someone can't relate, it might be hard for them to connect emotionally with others. Both the person who lacks empathy and the people around them may feel lonely or alone because of this problems with communication. Empathy is important for good communication because it helps people see things from the other person's point of view and react in the right way. People who don't have empathy may find it hard to talk to others in a way that hits home. They might seem cold, uninterested, or even rude, which could lead to tension or conflict in encounters. Cognitive empathy versus effective empathy. It's important to tell the difference between cognitive empathy and effective empathy. Cognitive empathy means intellectually getting another person's point of view. Effective empathy means sharing and experiencing another person's emotions. Some people may be great at cognitive empathy, but not so good at emotional empathy, while others may have trouble with both possible causes and solutions. Not having empathy can be caused by many things such as genes, parenting or neurological conditions like autism spectrum disorder. It might be hard to change someone's natural level of empathy, but therapy social skills, training and mindfulness techniques can help people become more empathetic and improve their relationships with others. To understand someone who doesn't have empathy, you need to have empathy yourself. We can connect and understand them better if we treat them with patience, kindness and a desire to see things from their point of view. Number 9. Those who judge what do you think of when you hear number 9? Those who judge. The word judgment in its simplest form. Judgment is an opinion or conclusion about someone or something. But when it comes to human behavior being judgmental means making a snap. Often negative assessment of others without fully understanding their situation or character. Sarah, who is proud of her. Discerning eye sees Peter's simple outfit at a community gathering and decides right away that he lacks sophistication and taste. She says this out loud enough for whispers to start, which makes Peter look bad and turns off people who think her judgment is unfair. Why then, you might ask, do people who judge quickly not deserve our respect or trust? Stupidity comes from understanding, not judging on the surface. It says that each person with their own set of problems and experiences deserves our understanding, not our judgment. Epicus, a Stoic philosopher, once said that we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. This shows how important it is to listen and understand before forming an opinion, Ion.
Sarah doesn't follow this advice because she judges others as a result of their lack of insight, which is necessary to earn trust and respect their decisions, do not lead to growth or understanding. Instead, they spread negativity and division. It is normal to have views. Stoicism tells us to be careful, have empathy, and really understand how complicated people are. People who judge quickly should stay away from these ideals because they hurt trust and respect. Let's try to live by the stoic principles of wisdom. Justice, bravery and moderation help build a community where people can understand and care about each other. Win over criticism and disagreement. He who walks with the wise grows wise seems to be a rule that helps us find good company as we look into people who might not deserve our trust. Trust and respect from the jealous to the uncaring, to the constant critic to the fake flatterer, we find not only people to avoid, but also people who reflect our own choices and actions. Stoicism doesn't just tell us to stay away from certain people, it also tells us to find those who help us grow in virtue and peace when choosing friends, partners or co-workers. Let's follow the Stoic advice to surround ourselves with people who make us want to be our best selves, who share our commitment to virtue, and who help us live a happy, peaceful life. Remember the counsel of Marcus Aurelius, the company of just and righteous men is better than wealth and a rich estate. Thus, as we journey forward, let us choose our companions wisely, for they shape our path to a virtuous, fulfilling life.